Hey guys, it's none other than your favorite host, Shinika Taylor, and we are here reporting live at Long Live the Pimp, Fresh Flow South Stage. A3C Weekend is coming to a close. However, the hottest kickback is in the city right now, so make sure you stay tuned and keep a lot. Come out, support, and let's have a good time, y'all, right here on Mad Talking. Yo, 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 you are back here watching Mad Talking. I'm here with Lope, the CEO of OBH, ARF. Billy's in the building in Atlanta. Tell me, what does the future look like for OBH? The future look real bright. Real, real bright. Go get that Darker Valley floating right now. My boy Ab is going to produce that drink. The whole, we got the streets on fire. Philly look good. Um, I'm planning on taking this OBH, my OBH company and my stamp into the next level, so I'm planning on getting us rich. I seen you posted three days ago about Black Lives Matter. How do you feel about the social injustices um, that is being created upon our people from the criminal justice system? Um, well, I believe it's horrible. I know about the injustice of black people, man. The second time I did some time in prison for something I didn't do. I know the guy who did it, you know what I'm saying? So they always did, they always done me dirty, so I know I know all too well about that, but um, I want to speak up against it. I want to put me in a position of power, and I'm, and I'm going at him. What's up, y'all? I am back here with Trey Monroe. You're watching Mad Talking. I got the winner right here, A3C, coast to coast winner. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. I'm very humble. I'm very uh, humble. That's what's up. So what was that moment like for you, just to win out of all these contestants? It's crazy. I mean, I'm not from the A, so to come here, you know, to the A and get so much love, man, I just appreciate it. That's what's up. You said you're from North Carolina, right? Hey, North Carolina. It's like, no. On that one. You took it back on that one. Right, right. All right, so tell me about um, your collaborations, who you've been working with. Yo, so I got a new single it's coming out soon. It's called Know You Know. It's featuring Young Dolph. So I'm dropping that in the next week or so. It's going to be great. Mm. And when you got that collaboration, how did that make you feel? It's amazing. We recorded it down here at Patchworks Recording Studio in the A, man. He came through. Dolph loved the record. Hopped right on. And he was done with it in like 20 minutes. So where do you see yourself in 10 years within this industry? 10 years, man. I see Dre Moreau on top of the charts. I see it being a household name, man. I'm coming. Just know. <laughs> and you're an R&B singer, right? I am. So I'm assuming you have a church background? You know I have a church background. I grew up singing in a youth choir. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so tell me about, do, do you ever feel like a guilty conscience? Or how does that compromisation go? Like, how does your family feel about, you know, transitioning from maybe church to secular? Right, I mean, usually it probably would be a problem. My grandma called me every day like, you preaching yet? You know, she want to know what's up. But I tell her all the time, grandma, you know, I got them lit out here. So she rocking with me. She love it. So what was your inspiration behind just writing an R&B? Like, who have you looked up to who had paved the way for you? I think I look up to Usher. Um, if I went a little older, David Ruffin. I just think they're big showmen, big show guys out here. You know, they build build good performances, and I love performing, so that's my thing. All right, so if you could do a collab with one person, just one, that's all you get, who would it be? Man, one person. That's hard, yo. Oh, man. That's a hard one right there, yo. I think if it would be anybody, it probably had to be a producer. Um, Artist-wise, though, maybe Andre 3000. Andre 3000. Wow, the Atlanta native. Why Why Andre? He's so hands-on with everything, man. Like, I just think we get in the studio and make something crazy. We might make another genre for y'all music. Like, it might could go crazy. <laughs> and with you being an R&B, how do you feel that we know we don't really hear R&B mainstream artists no more? It has a new sound. How do you how do you think you're gonna stand out within this era? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just I'm bringing R&B with a little bit of hip hop influence, so you know, I'm just I got it going out here. You know, I just want to keep the sound flowing, man. It's still popping. It's still gonna get you hype in the club, but it's still smooth for the ladies. You know, R&B. <laughs> well, shout out, shout out. We have to save R&B. We found our savior. Give him a tune one time. <laughs> Touch me, tease me, I know what you need, and I'm going to give it to you right now in the worst way. <laughs> Ladies, calm down, relax. He is here. <laughs> it is okay. North Carolina, we are out here. Tell the people where they can follow you at. Hey, yo, you can follow me on everything at Dre Moreau, D-R-E-M-U-R-R-O.
All right, you heard it best. Make sure you go ahead and follow him, support him. We're going to be looking for you. I'm seeing top 10 in the future. Top 10 on the billboards. What's up, y'all? You are back here watching Mad Talking. And let me tell you, he just ripped the stage with Kilo. So what was your inspiration behind writing Kilo? Man, I wanted to write something that, you know, everybody could feel. We're talking about how I make beats and how I sell music. All right, that's what's up. So tell me, how are you different from other artists in your region? Um, I'm a lot different because I write and I produce, I sing, I do everything myself. I engineer, mix, master, the whole nine yards. Oh, this is the boss of all bosses. All right, so um, who would be a rapper that you would define within the industry? Mm, what's the question again? So that was... Like, who would you, who do you define with? Who do you, who inspires you? Oh, Drake, most definitely Drake. Yeah, Drake. Is Why? Man, I like the way how his music is real personal, you know what I'm saying? I like that about him. He always comes, you know what I'm saying, from the heart, so I with Drake. Right. So is that what you want um, your fans to get out of your music, that you're personal? Exactly, exactly. And and what other messages? Um, You know, just to, you know, love each other, you know what I'm saying? Be nonviolent. <laughs> All right, so now that you want to talk about this nonviolence, how do you feel about a lot of shootings amongst our people? I feel very bad about it. I feel like we should stop killing each other. I mean, I feel like we should, you know, show a little bit more love. That's why I make a lot of love music. So, you know what I'm saying? Get you a lady and make love. Don't. <laughs> Ladies, you heard them. Tell, tell them a little bit about, you know, what is your favorite, what's your favorite song that you have written? My favorite song I've written actually is Kilos. I love it, man. I just really love performing and it's a great record. Why is it your favorite? Is it, is it, did it really happen or? It actually is just like a, a introduction to the game. I was just telling people that, you know, I'm taxing for the 808, I'm taxing for beats, I'm taxing for features, and, you know, it's just like a good way to jump out to the game. It's like my first single, so, you know, I really like it. Hey. So do you have any additional collaborations or anyone in the future that you're collabing with? Yeah, I actually have a song with Do or Die and Rick Ross right now called Love in the Sky. I got another one with Twister called Aquafina. It's a lot finna drop. I got one with Ty Dolla Sign called uh, I Love Kush. That's finna be dropping soon. So, y'all yeah, be on the lookout for it. A lot of good music, man. Street 401K in the building. Hey, well, you heard it best from Scotty. Make sure you go ahead. Tell the people where they can follow you at. Man, you can follow me at all the social media platforms on Scotty Music. Just follow. Just find Scotty Music. Scotty with a Y. Music, uh, four, Street 401K. RIP my boy Reggie Lowe, man. Can't do it without you, bro. What's up, y'all? I'm here with Preem from Ohio. I heard you just dropped a record with Style Speed. Tell us a little bit about that. It's a joint called Holiday. You know what I mean? Something for the streets. That's the way we always keep it. You know what I mean? Okay. So tell me more about your collaborations and what type of artist you are. Um, I got joints with Scarface. A joint that was number one in St. Louis called Bust It Down with K Stylist. You know what I mean? So we really just been locking up the streets and the, the concerts are selling out. Everything is beautiful. You know what I mean? We just grinding. All right, this your first time in Atlanta? No, I'm back and forth here all the time. This is my second home right here. So yeah, I'm always here. All right, well, you're out here grinding. So tell me, what makes you different um, from the other artists that are coming from the region of Ohio? Really just relating to really just relating to people, you know what I mean? Relating for the Lil was coming up and, you know, talking to the streets more and motivating the ones that come from where I come from to, you know, they see me and they see me, you know, as a as a role model rather than the person who walk up to them in a suit and tell them not to do what they do. And they look at me, how they know I come from where they come from, you know, that'll motivate them. They listen to me before they listen to them. So, you know. So we got an inspirational leader as well. So tell the people where they can follow you at. Um, on IG at heartbreak underscore preem, Twitter preem dbic, preem dbic.com. Watching Mad Talking, I'm with Jules is dope all the way from Baltimore. A3C weekend, we here in the A. How you feeling? I'm feeling wonderful. How about yourself? I'm feeling good as well. Now, see, you you came to this interview swagged out. He got the shades on, got the fitted. <laughs> Just trying to get like you. You got, you know, the, the suave flavor on right now. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so tell me a little bit about your style and where you it was inspired from. Oh, wow. Um, I don't know if I necessarily have a style. Um, and I guess that's uh, pretty much, um, you know, inspired from me being an only child. You know what I'm saying? And being able to express my creativity. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, but um, that, that's that's kind of what stems from it. I'm um, also just kind of having a, a, a little history in music with my family. Uh, my dad being a DJ, et cetera. Right. So, yeah. All right, so tell me, when are you looking to be signed, or are you going to stay remain independent, or how's that going to work for you? I think for the most part, it's going to remain independent. Um, I'm actually going to be opening or uh, um, starting a label um, 2017. Okay. Um, yeah, so just stay posted. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll hear about it. I'm looking for talent everywhere I go. And, um, yeah, we're looking to be like the new name, you know what I'm saying? Hey, so do you have any collaborations that you're, um, that you're wishing to have or, or that you're working with on the future? Wow. Um, I, I, I love to work with a number of people, um, especially being, um, you know, so versatile. 
Um, so, I, yeah, I like to really stretch my wings. I'm not really limited to, to anybody. But I love to work with, like, Chance and Kanye, um, you know, Pharrell, uh, people in the industry we've heard from. Um, even Missy, man. Missy's so crazy and always has been. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, y'all heard it from him best. Tell the people where they can follow you at. Uh, you can follow me at Jules is Dope. It's uh, J-U-L-E-S-I-S-D-O-P-E. And um, that's all social media platforms. Check me out. I'm exhausted, y'all. Just finished rocking shows all weekend. And, uh, yeah. We keep grinding. We support it. This is Baltimore's finest. Make sure you go ahead, subscribe, listen to him, support everything. All right, y'all. I'm here with Lil Breeze all the way from Shot Town, Chicago. And he just performed. Was that all neck? And you said that's a single on your mixtape, right? All right, so tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind writing that. Well, all neck. I was really just, it's about anybody who know that song, who been through the struggle, really know where I'm coming from. Like, you play basketball, you play sports, it's, it's all around, like all net. Anything you doing, it's all net. Like you succeeding in what you do. And you not trying to take failure for an answer. Like you trying, you, you ain't trying even to answer. You, do, you doing it, you know what I'm saying? Like all net. No rims, no real shots, <laughs> no layups, no misses, none of that. Just all net, like all net. That's what's up. All right, so are you an independent artist? And not, not at the moment right now. I'm under the label SMG Celine Music Group, but yeah, we all solo artists. And I just dropped my mixtape, Road to Royalties. All Net is an upcoming single on the mixtape, so be sure to go get the mixtape. It's hot. All right, how long have you been um, an artist, or have you been rapping? Well, I've been rapping for a long, long time, though, um, since I was like seven years old, but I really just started taking it seriously, like, in 2014. Okay. And two years ago. And are, and are you waiting for your big break? I'm just making music because I love to make music. And, you know, it's, it's it. I ain't making no money off this. It's like I'm putting money into it. And it's like I'm going to keep doing it until something happens. I just love to make music. Like, I ain't really waiting for no big break. Like, somebody going to hear me out there. Right. Well, that's what's up. Your passion Your passion is going to take you a long way. So, who would, other than yourself... Who would you say is your um, favorite rapper or artist? I don't have any favorite rapper. Like, all of them, like, awesome to me. Like, Just love music. Yeah, I love music. It's a nice handful that I have, like, a preference, but right. all the artists are awesome. Well, if you could um, work with any producer or artist, who would you work with? Um, Zaytoven, of course. Um, we live in Atlanta right now. Right. <laughs> um, a lot of Dr. Dre. Um... A lot of co-producers that I got in mind right now. Uh, too many in name right now, really though. Like a lot though, it's a okay. lot. It's good. We got it. Yeah. All right. Well, tell the people. Right. Right. We got it. Tell the people where they can follow you at. Oh yeah. Be sure to follow the website. That's www.salimmusicgroup.com. That's S A L E E M. And you can follow me. Well, all the social media up on Bruise is there up on the website. So you can follow the website or follow me at One Bruise Up everywhere. Snapchat, Instagram, every social media platform. All right, y'all. Well, y'all heard him. This is Mad Talking. I'm here with Lil Breeze. My name's Shinika, and we're out. DJ Crazy from Baltimore, actually the creator of the Wu-Tang. Tell me how you feeling, and we're going to get down to this, because I really thought the Wu-Tang came from Philly. So listen, this is how it goes. Like, Wu-Tang, right? My family created Baltimore Club. Like, my family is some of the, uh, like, the originators of it. Like, I grew up around Black Star, Case with right. Broad Lee from, uh, 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 dance, my, they was all my old. Hey, I got from oh, you right, like Wu Tang is from Philly. I moved to Philly when I was 13. Okay. So when I moved to Philly, the year I moved to Philly, Wu, like, like the actual Wu Tangin yeah. was created right when I was there by the dude with Too Nasty, right? Okay. So what we did, like, as soon as we got to Philly, so when I got to Philly about three months in, I met up with my boy DJ Pop, Corey Flocka, and we switched it up to call it Tangin. So we, the Wu Tang is, was created by Freak Nasty, but right. we created Wu, we created Tangin. Right. The Tangin, they, 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 all that. Wait, the, wait, the main anthem, let's talk about the anthem. When I, when I was growing up, I swear, I was like in a, a freshman in high school, and what was that, what? Okay, what, what? Oh, like that was the anthem. Shout out to DJ Freak Nasty, you feel <laughs> what I'm saying? He originated the actual, like, Wu Tangin at, uh, 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 all that, you feel what I'm saying? We took it to the retro, different level. Like the whole South Street thing, the whole right. movie night, Love Park. We was promoting that stuff at 13 years old. Like, wow. everybody you see now, all the superstars, like, a lot of two nights. They be honest, like, a lot of superstars from Philly nowadays were dancers, break dancers, Wu-Tangers. 
I lied. They were listen, listen. That's me. Listen, Uzi. Like one of his videos on Baller Alert just went viral. He was Wu Tang and hit the split and everything off a song we helped produce back in the day. Wow. You know what I'm saying? PNB, they all around Team Nike and stuff and all that. So we created all that shit. We booked Meek Mill right before like a month or two weeks right before he blew up. Like at 923. Like that was all out. That's how I came from Baltimore Club. Then I moved to Philly and started one of the biggest dances with my friends, DJ Pops, Core Flogger, the Wu Tang. You right. know what I'm saying? Like DJ Dan yeah, yeah, his legacy. So what are you working on now? So after that whole little wave I moved to Jersey and stuff and I kept my team Nike stuff right. going in South Jersey. I threw all the new Brunswick parties in South Jersey. Um I started you were part of Club Extreme. Nah 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 not I was about to say, alright. <laughs> I was more part of like the jump zone, okay. New Brunswick zone and stuff like that. So, so about 2014, I created Chaotic Entertainment after Team Nike was done. We uh, I graduated 2012, rest of Team Nike in Jersey graduated 2013. So, um, 2014, I created Chaotic Entertainment, my, my uh, celebrity um, entertainment company. So, I threw my first celebrity event was Core. Shout out to Core in that new deal. Feel me? We get listen. Core was my first celebrity event. My second celebrity event, by the time my second celebrity event, I put myself back in the Philly. And I got vulnerable. I put myself, you know, to be vulnerable. And I got signed with Ab. Ab picked me up. After Ab signed me, I threw my own um, signing party to Ab and stuff like that. Helped by my manager right there, you feel what I'm saying? Threw my own signing party. Mike Zombie was there. Um, Dark, well, AR Ab. Lee Mason was my date. Lee Mason was my headliner. DJ, listen. I love, listen, I love me some Lee Mason. She'll tell you, like, I helped her break, like, two of her records. You feel what I'm saying? That's my baby. So she's a part of my second celebrity event. So when I signed with Ab, I got into the whole entertainment company. I threw seven celebrity events. My last dude was Jacquees. Hold on. Here we go. Before we were signed with Cash Money, this is documented, everybody. Go to my Instagram, my YouTube. I booked the hey, Ab. Stop taking all the credit. I booked, ja I booked the Rich Gang Cash Money artist before anybody. I better do y'all research. Do your research. Three months before we got signed, I threw the last celebrity event in Franklinville. Okay. Franklinville, hey, Franklin, Jersey. Franklinville Jersey yeah. is in the building. Jersey. Shout out to my boy Mir Fontana down here too. You feel what I'm saying? Jersey in the building. But yeah, I threw this. I threw my last celebrity event at that. Before that, I threw like I threw seven total. All of them hit a thousand plus in Williamstown. My last one was. Exactly. Exactly. So I threw my last step. I, I, like uh, I threw my last one in um yeah at, at the skating ring with Jacquees. So that's what I got going on there. I throw celebrity events. I'm a celebrity event planner. Anything you okay. need, sound lighting, staging, celebrity stamps, all that. I'm just so you know, man. Hit me up. You feel what I'm saying? Um, I'm the program director, Club Onyx Worldwide, like the radio station. So I help with some of the like the uh like the, uh, like, uh all the celebrity booking sometimes. Uh. I interview all the celebrities. You go to all, like, go to my IG. You see all my celebrity interviews. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's not like, uh, it's more like of a meet and greet. Cause when they come, all the, listen, when they come into Philly, they know to holler at the top room DJ. You know what I mean? They know to holler at crazy. So you can go see youngster, everybody. They gotta stop and see me at Onyx. All right, well y'all already know we are rocking with Philly, Philly. Jersey in the building. But this is history. A blast from the past. Originator of the Tang. Y'all already know where we going. All right, y'all. That is it. A3C Weekend is officially over all three coasts. You already know. You heard it right here from Matt Talking. I'm your favorite host, Shinika. And until next time, 